Okay. Hello, everybody. This is Elijah Ignatieff of the School of Conscious Communication, and I'm here with Sara Kanakin, who is a registered therapeutic counselor who is focusing on dream therapy as her main modality at the moment. And you are in the middle of, or you're just about, you're starting a course, aren't you? Yeah, I just started um, a six weeks on online series just this week. And um, I have a fantastic group. Um, they're a group of really great dreamers and um, we've we've done the first week and we're already having conversations about lucid dreaming and out of body experiences and how to support um, your dream time um, for that. So that's super exciting for me because it also means that we go deeper and I can share more information that I have. Um, generally, this first um, workshop series just takes us to the place where people start start to ask questions about that and i don't usually have a group that's so advanced so this is really exciting for me uh, how many people are in your course right now i have uh seven people in my class right now it's a really small tight group and it's beautiful everybody gets to share really deeply and and yeah it's amazing is brooke in there uh she is in there and brooke is actually she didn't show up for the first class because she went to um the protest very creek okay. um so she got a video of the of the thing and and yeah we'll yeah it's super great okay yeah um okay so did you i sent you a message in facebook and i was uh, i wanted to introduce you into the latest uh, new paradigm toolkit tool for you perhaps to, te to test and it's an or an online oracle uh, remedy oracle. So it's it's taking the concept of the three cards, the value, the conversation type, and the conceptual lens, and having a way to answer questions. And so I asked myself the question before talking to you: What would be the most empowering conversation to have with Sara Kanakin? <laughs> and I've got resilience, uh, visioning, and intention. And I'm wondering, without any explanation, can you go with that? Or uh... yeah, yeah, no, that that's great. Um, I I did notice um, the definition around. I, I think it was intention. Mm -hmm. um, that was the definition was a bit off. For bit me. off. Okay. Yeah, because um, so for me, intention doesn't come from the mind. Uh, the mind is the vehicle through which it's translated. Um, and then the body is the, the, the actual messenger. Well, what's interesting is resilience is actually at the place of intention. Like there's intention and attention, right? In right. the vision convo. Yep. So we're actually taking the concept of intention, focusing through the mind, but it's also like, to me, that's the heart, um, right. that the resilience is linked into your heart. And that's the intention you're bringing into that conversation, but then focusing on intention so that it's a little bit of a, you're right, intention is, is unlike the mind, but what's the relationship with the mind? Like, doesn't the mind direct intention? So, uh, of course, the mind is like a focalizer, but it's not where it's born. Mm. Mm. Right? And, and I think that distinction is really important for people because otherwise people think we are the thing we do, right? Like I would think, you know, I, I could think I'm a therapist, but I'm not a therapist. Um, a therapist is, is currently, that is the way that I'm expressing, you know, the information or wisdom or even sharing um, some of my own stuff in mm -hmm. the world at the moment. So the, that is the intention is that that's the how I'm how I'm sharing it in the world? Like you are the creator of of uh, integrated map system that supports development at so many different levels, right? So how and that is your, but that's not who you are. Mm. You're much more than that, and that's why you have ten billion maps, right? Because. I mean, you're not just a map maker, you're integrating all these different systems, which are complex for most people. Mm. So getting into here with the visioning convo yep. of perhaps we should look at, you know, your vision and, you know, what do you want to create and how do you see the bigger picture of what you're trying to put together? Because you've been working on something, you know, as long as I've known you 
and you're always educating yourself. You're always upping your game. You're learning from masters and you're bringing, you're kind of at a point now, I think you're ready to bring your work into the world, which you're doing. Uh, what is your larger vision? So I guess I have, um, I mean, I have a vision for a collective of people that work with me. And then I have kind of my own vision of my own personal development. So it, it depends on where are we, you know, where is the touch point for that? Well, let's look at both. Why don't you start first with your own personal development and okay. then Okay, great. Collective. So my own personal development, I, um, for sure, the therapeutic piece for me is about my personal development and I'm sharing that with people. And in the, in the sense that it's actually the first vocation that I've had where I get to use all of my tools and some creativity, which is really exciting for me. And it's super gratifying because it also addresses my personal service that I like, that I like to do. Um, and I'm developing that in a bunch of different areas. So I'm right now I'm focusing on the dream component that I'm really going hard at developing and following through with a lot of um, research and I'm setting up for my own research in that area. Um, and so that's the dream component. I'm also um, on, I have ongoing classes that I'm taking in, in different areas of therapy. Um, and in particular, I'm working also in sexuality and relationships and that kind of thing. That actually, the relationship aspect is, you know, an issue in my own life. So I, I'm working on learning more about that so that then I can, I can offer once I get more information and learn how to, how to do it for myself, right? Well, um, is there anyone that, you've ever met who doesn't have relationship issues? <laughs> well, I guess, no, I suppose. I mean, I suppose that's the beauty of being human, right? Because it's like, that's the place where we see all of our stuff the most magnified, I guess. Um, so that's for the, the therapeutic side of my personal and then and then the rest is my creative piece. So I'm really developing my creative side right now. I'm doing um, a lot of writing. I'm, uh, I'm writing poetry and writing some um, stories about my life and, and the experiences that I've had. And who knows how that'll unfold. Um, and I'm learning to sculpt. So that's kind of you know, my personal vision. Wow. And then, and then my vision for, you know, people that work with me is I have this belief that we have the capacity um, as humans, because I, I believe in our capacity to transform. I have this belief that we can, through dreaming, not only heal ourselves and, and the wounds and, and, and the connections that we have with people, that we can make them, strengthen them, that we also can pull down a vision for a new way of being in the world. And that vision, I, I need a bunch of really good dreamers in order to create a container where a, a number of people could start, start accessing at, at a better, I don't want to say a better frequency, but when there's a collective, of course, we know the energy of the collective creates a higher consciousness. Um, so yeah, so I, you know, part of me doing dream work and having dream workshops is I'm also looking for, for people that I can personally invite later to this other thing. How many dreamers are you looking for? Like, is there a, a number? I think uh, somewhere between 10 and 18. Hmm. And mm -hmm. it just, it depends on the capacity and of course, um, the personalities have to, you know, be a good mix and, and people have to have some basic, basic skills. So the basic skills that I'm looking for is that people have the capacity, they already can remember their dreams. They have the capacity to lucid dream. Uh, they also have um, some intuitive capacities. So they would already need to be, be having that kind of psychic kind of thing going on. And then um, that they're they're able to work collaboratively. Mm. That they're not just looking for you know their own self-aggrandization. Right. So it's it's like a superhero team of dreamers that yeah. are looking to collectively dream a new reality for our species, sort of speak. Or yeah, because not yes, 
I think that if we all oh the I mean the other part which I always say is basic for me but I keep getting reminded that I need to share it is that people have a belief in God <laughs> because um, you can pull down visions that aren't that aren't um, related to light or consciousness and so that really is the foundation for the the group that they actually are going to have spiritual practices and that they're going to believe in God so that we can open to the light and allow that information to come so then the, the looking at resilience here in terms of the visioning um you want to speak a bit about that in terms of uh, you have a little bit but it, I, I think it for a person to get to the level you're talking about they've they've probably had to gone through a lot of and done their own work right for sure i mean for sure people are you know i mean they have to have an understanding of their own personal process. They have to know where, what areas in their life are challenging, where kind of their triggers are. They have to be able to self-reflect um, because all of these things they get, once you start adding um, energy into a system, then all of the neurotic stuff hits kind of all the cracks, right? And starts coming out of the cracks. So there's an expected, kind of purification process that will happen with the group. Um, and that happens, I think, naturally with all groups that come together. Um, most of the time, though, people aren't conscious of it and they just think it's, you know, the people in the room are not compatible or whatever. But really, it's a beautiful sign because it means that the group is actually starting to create cohesion. Right. It's got to break apart before it comes back together kind of thing yeah and you have to see where the weak points are so that everybody can go okay this you know maybe one person is exhibiting a particular weak point because that's really their personal issue but that also is a reflection of the holograph right of the hologram because it's a part of everyone else too so everyone needs to address that same issue in themselves right so you're doing a, a six-part course where you're dreaming yeah. Do you take that into account? Like in the beginning, are you doing more shadow work or is the whole thing kind of shadow work? Or um, So it depends on the group because uh, collectively some groups don't want to go into the shadow at all. And then, and then really we're just spending time going through the mechanics of dreaming. Um, but groups that want to go deeper, usually that shadow work comes up right away. But yeah, the whole course has aspects of that. And of course, as soon as you're working with your dreams, your unconscious, as soon as it realizes that you're trying to talk to it, it will start feeding you tons of information and give you the opportunity to work through those shadow parts. Really? So if, if you have intention yep. towards healing your unconscious or healing the parts of yourself that are in your unconscious, your unconscious speaks to you differently, like more. Yes. More yes. So, so it's why we end up in crisis as humans like we end up in in issue we have having issues because if we're resistant to change our unconscious is always pushing us to be um a better whole system so if we imagine the human condition as fragmented pieces of ourselves frozen potentially from traumas at different ages and different times so we're a conglomeration of you know, all these pieces that are trying to flow like a river because the energy that comes in flows in and then it we also put energy out. So when we're in environments that, you know, we're taking a lot of energy in and then we feel drained or depleted, it's because we're either holding other energy or and not letting it out. We're an open system. So that has to flow in and out easily, but it can't because it gets stuck on these fragmentations. So dreaming helps us actually identify which are the fragments that we need to address right now. Oh, wow. So it's like the next step. It's, in my opinion, it's the largest untapped human potential. Wow. For all of humanity. I mean, it's, and, you know, indigenous family or indigenous communities have known this for centuries and they've, you know, that's their basic. You know, mm. can you dream? Can you remember your dreams? Can you interact with your dreams? I mean, that's standard. Everybody has to do that. I, I know a First Nations man who's a master dreamer that I should introduce you to. I, I will. He's uh, 
he does the most of his dreams with anyone I know. I, I don't know how far you go with your dreams. We haven't talked about it that much, but with him. <clears throat> so I, I want to ask you a bit about, so what, what overall, what does this sort of tell you? So to me, it, it says, it says that I need to, if I just look at those three, the way, you know, um, visioning, of course, in the center for me, right. And then resilience and intention, it says it, to me that there's a refining process because the visioning is continuing and that the intention needs to you know be clarified 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 so that resilience can be developed or created uh. right because if those things aren't in harmony then i guess how do you see you know you can't have resilience but isn't it like let's say i look at you and I would say, I think you're a very resilient person. You, you've gone through a lot. Um, I'd like to get into a bit of your story as you grew up, just to, so people really understand who you are a bit, because I, I think you're quite a, a unique individual who has an incredible past history that is coming through you. And so I think a lot of what you're doing is you're healing multiple generations of, of your people, so to speak. And resilience is, I would say, part of your nature. You're very adaptable and you're very... I mean, that would be a word I, I would reply to you. And if you're looking at the vision, <clears throat> so the, the resilience is already there, but the, the visioning around intention, it's funny like that relationship between the mind and the body that, you know, what truly is intention mm -hmm. and then how do you help people focus, let's say intention, whether going into dreaming or into their lives, right? Like the relationship between vision and intention is huge, but like, what, what really is it? Like, what is a vision and conversation for people? And I think that the, there are certain people I know that are very good at visioning and they speak their vision and they're really, and a lot of people that they don't even have their vision, right? They, they're not, they don't even know this conversation exists mm -hmm. and they may not know about, let's say setting intention. I just wonder within your curriculum, how, you know, again, like right. this, this is a very unique spell. This is like one of a lifetime. There's a billion spells that come out of these, these, these. Yeah. Yeah. Divinations. I think for me, um, if I look at my curriculum, um, it's based on the intention that I set, right? And my intention is to really have people have a personal tool of transformation that they don't need to go somewhere else to get, that they don't need to talk to other people because if we can, if we can access our dreams and the language of symbols, then we have everything we need to grow exponentially not just a little bit but exponentially because the more you interact with your dreams in the symbolic world the more it participates with you it's mm. kind of like you know reaching you know the 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 sistine chapel right the fingers touching each other it's kind of like when you connect that part it's like yeah there's this a connection that that allows us us to grow so for me in I haven't actually done the piece where I have people set an intention for themselves. But now that I'm seeing this on here, I think it's an important, important piece for my group that that actually we go through a process because it does um, that collective magic really does help anchor things for people. So I, I'm going to add that to my next week's class. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. I it's awesome. It's good to see a, a tool or a map being used. That's all. Yeah. Uh, hey, I, I'm thinking uh, I'd like to offer you another chance, or but a question that you ask, and that we can uh, uh, then go through that process of seeing, of answering that, and just want to show you again how this this remedy works from the get go. Okay. Um, okay. So here we go. We go share screen. We go da 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 da. Okay, so okay. We've got, uh, we're at choose a remedy. Yep. Dot com. Uh, this is not, we're waiting for our artwork. And so this is just a temporary picture. And so if we go, there's three ways you can divide a question where you don't even have to come up with a question. You get a question and it's in six categories, business question, intimate question, family question, social question, friendship question and service question you probably noticed those are the six mm -hmm. meta conversational fields okay so what i've seen with software is when you when you organize by models 
as opposed to just individual words that they're using. It's a very different way of organizing software. Mm -hmm. Oh, crap, I just... Uh... <laughs> So if we go <coughs> write a question, so what is your question? So my question is, um, how do I, what's the best way to attract um, or to, I don't know, have people that need me or need my services find me? I like what is the best way to track my prime customers? Yeah, that's great. Charisma. <laughs> Briefing. Briefing. And lens. So you want me to read it? Charisma is to value a spiritual power or personal quality that gives you individual influence with people. Briefing is to get the people involved ready for an event or activity and lens a channel through which something can be seen or understood. So what does that say to you? Huh. Well, charisma, I mean, for sure, if I'm not on my game, if I'm not feeling great, then it's really hard to attract people, right? Or invite people in because who wants to play with that? Um, briefing, I don't think I've ever done a briefing. Ever. <laughs> ever. In, in, even in all of my, you know, in, even in the corporate stuff or even with in the festival world, I've never done, I haven't done a briefing. So for me that it's like, I look at that and I'm, I want to go, no, um, but only because I don't know how to do that or what that is and so now i'm getting really excited because i'm like okay let's let's maybe take a week or two and do some briefings maybe i'll just like i could do like little video briefings on my stuff and just call it the briefing <laughs> right like how do you um, get ready for dreaming kind of like before going to before you go to bed what do you do for to, to get in the best state yeah okay Okay, I mean, that is, um, we did in the first part of the workshop, I go over, you know, how to set your space up and, you know, to start to create that sacred relationship, because you're connecting with yourself, your unconscious wisdom. So there's, you know, a sacredness to it and a, and a, and a sweetness, right? Because it's, you're connecting with that soft, amazing part of who you are. Mm. So yeah, I can do that. Okay, and then the lens, what do you think that means? lens um yeah i mean lens is really about the perspective and and i think for me personally that's the piece um especially in the last same month and a half i've been really dealing with how do you break the framework of a lens right like how do you if we create a lens in our mind that has a certain perspective how do we you know break that because the natural impulse is as soon as new information comes in that's not part of that lens it's like it just dismisses it's like you know bouncing off a field right mm -hmm. so yeah i don't know i don't know i need some help with that what do you think well charisma briefing lens i mean lens is basically the the basis of everything that i'm doing so lenses are are in this like look at this lens on lens it's like two aces on two aces right it's like right. It's, it's the amplification of okay so i've got you know we've got a, a whole series of of cards right so like yeah. i guess you can't kind of see the individuality okay yep you know and and let's say we do one more repetition okay um like each of these lenses creates a formula to see something. <clears throat> and when you're able in your mind to shift the lenses, you're shifting how you see something and the perception of whatever's occurring. So, I mean, if you just change that word lens to, to dream state, or if you looked at, you know what I think this could be, is this could be the beginning of you creating your own card set. Right. That's linked into, okay, well, what are all the key terms that you're using for dreaming? Oh, wow. And we'll make a card set and make, a, make a set fun. of lenses that is like a, 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 
your own set that comes in here because like i see multiple card sets right like this is just yeah. the, the beginning of reorganizing our whole language structure yes and so for you to attract your prime customers it's almost like what the inflow does is, is it's a navigating system to go okay well who are they there's some sort of okay if they're 28 they're male you know no spiritual life lack of meaning saturn return um you know can afford courses uh, doesn't listen well um but deep down really wants some meaning in a sense mm -hmm. those are kind of like a bunch of frames and and lenses coming to go okay well you know because you're very good i think at reading people and but they may not even understand you know you get a direct intuition but then you've got to language it to tell them yes. what you see or what you are frank, what, what you, because I, I think you've got the instant identification, but I don't think you've quite formulated your language process to go, okay, this is what I see. And now I'm going to take you on a journey, brief you so you can see it too. Right. That is the piece I'm missing. It's true because I often, and you know, sometimes people get a little nervous when when after they come to a session with me because of course i see where and what the the challenges are but sometimes it's not always so evident so there is a process right where you let people kind of do their own thing and i i guess i that that's probably why the briefing piece comes up because uh, that is the place where i need the most um um i need a bigger net of language well it's, it's it's like let's say for the synergizer sessions it's like what i've learned is i i take the people through a process now at the beginning you can tell tons or you can just tell enough to get them ready so briefing is you're getting them ready for something unique or, or new and it yeah. could be just i'm about to zap you with my gift but for instead of just zapping you and you you all right. of a sudden going, ah, I'm going to tell you, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm about to zap you with my gift. You're, you know, brace yourself. You're about to get some info that's going to rock your world. Are you ready? Zap. Right. So that like, I think what I see with me and I think with everyone is we're, we, you know, we're, we're, we're doing a process. We're really good at two or three parts. We're missing one or two parts and we haven't put all the process together to go, okay, that's my ideal job. That's my yeah. ideal process. Yeah. And then to me, you go through these combo types where again, the first one is like first contact. Like, what do you say to someone on the first contact? Like do you give them the card, then you give them your website or do you actually use this right away? You go, I, you know, are you into dreaming? Let me give you something here, try this out. And then if it works, give me a call. Right. And all of a sudden that you've given them something, they get high value, they experience, they go, geez, it worked. Now I'm going to get you, now I'm going to, participate mm -hmm. and that's something which you can do with everybody and in a sense you need to but we sort of we, we get very shy about expressing our gift when we're not like you know really on when we know it and, yeah. and we know everyone needs it and i think that's the charisma is like turning on your charm turning on you know you i think you play down a lot over the years just to get by but when you're really excited you're in your full energy you know, mm -hmm. I think you're very potent force, but I think you've you've stopped that. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's it's opening up and you stopped it because I think you knew you were missing something and you 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 knew you would overwhelm people. Yeah. Cool. I yeah, okay. That's awesome. This is so now I'm what I'm seeing is I'm seeing two things. So there were um two maps that caught me in your last few weeks of of whatever the one that you did for matthew right oh the, the, the switchboard the switchboard yeah because what i realized and the reason i was attracted to that is because i could see that i had both the pieces but i didn't have the switch <laughs> <laughs> right and so i'm like I, I i gotta watch what's going to go on there because that was the part for me that i felt like i was missing and then the other one that you had sent me which was the um the seven seven step process yes okay yeah yeah well that's that's the in-between yeah yeah 
So that's great. Thanks for giving it to me and me not knowing and my intuition going, I need those. I better talk to Elijah about that. So yeah, so that's great. So then we're if we're going there, then you're now you should be doing the briefing for me for those things. Is that not right? <laughs> me doing the briefing for those two maps? Yeah. Well, I think it, it's not a briefing. I think it would be more design specs. Okay. Okay. I think that's yeah, definitely the the briefing is coming once you've got your design specs kind of mapped out. And that to me is what you're pointing to is the bigger picture. And then because you've got, depending on if you're the switchboard or you can look at, okay, here's the eight things I'm offering and here's eight demographics. And I mean, I like, I, I've come up with these eight, I don't know if they really will work for you, but basically male or female, rich or poor, um, under 35 or over 35. And that I think really distinct, like if you're over 35 and you're female and you're rich, you're very different from if you're male under 35 and poor, right? Like you just right. you can't approach these people the same way. Right. And just like money distinguishes people, age distinguishes people and gender. And no offense to all the other genders out there. I'm just breaking it down into something simple, at least for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so to me on the other end of you've got your eight. Yeah. And then you've got your understanding or basically the lens or you're going to brief each one of them differently and then over here you've got either your you know you could put all your gifts you could put all your services you could put you could put you with seven other people if you wanted to do an eight person team which i think right. we're going to be heading towards at some point that could yeah. be a bigger one and then you've got your own and then you've got you like here's my dream workshop here's my one-on-one -on -one counseling here's my uh dream yearly group here's my super team of yeah. my dreamers yeah that that is actually how i see it i do see um a process for people that want to do really deep healing and go really far um kind of like a journey and i do see um you know i i can do the whole journey with them but i i feel like some of my colleagues are better in certain areas than i am Mm -hmm. and would be better to have them do those if we were like to break it down into a module system right that they would be better to do those those modules so yeah i like that okay okay i'm just uh saving that's awesome so yeah the lens piece hey the lens on the lens Talk about like, uh, making a point, eh? Yeah, really. That's so funny. What the heck? Okay. And so what I do is I uh, put a date. And then I put the question. Yeah. Um, So you should save your spells and I then like that. so and I, I would like to so part of let's say being in the very secret plan and knowing me so long is the people who are in the plan get access to the tools as they come out to test them out and to start to integrate with all the other tools so the idea is that you're using more and more of the tools and as new ones come out because I, I really haven't been in a position to sort of strategically release my tools in the right way. I've just been building them right as they yeah. come up. And so now there's a, my switch point is like, okay, like I, there's, I've got enough sort of clients or projects where I have to get very professional in terms of how it's coming out in this software yeah. program. You know, at some point it's gonna be hundreds of thousands of people using it. So got to figure out the, the, the nuts and bolts of it, right? Mm -hmm. I, 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 well, I love that. So I, if you, choose a remedy.com um that's your access right now okay and you get one spell a day you get five in the beginning but if you are a again participant in the very secret plan there are rewards to participating and so there's a premium account where you get unlimited spells okay 
And so then you can use it in your work. You can use it, you know, there's, there's a lot you can do with having a question answer format like this. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to, um, yeah, I, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, I think what I'll do is I'm gonna send my current little group to with the, their intention setting and if they totally don't know what kind of intention to set or however i'm going to ask them just for shits and giggles to see if they can come to to your what is it choose a remedy.com choose a remedy.com yeah and just to see what what yeah what it's like for them oh so you want to introduce it to them already why that, not <laughs> that's that's already jumping that's at facilitator level that's, is that too far well no, just as long as they don't pass it on. It's just, oh, yeah. I, it's not ready to go into the public okay. yet. Then I'll wait. Yeah. Wait, I'll wait. Wait, till, wait till we get the next level, the, 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 the next part done, but you can okay. use it for you right now. Okay. Okay. Because we okay. want to have it sort of multi level where anyone you introduce is going to go under you. Okay. So we just have to sort of figure that out. Okay. But it, it works, right? It's it totally works. I mean, this is amazing. I like it picked the places where I actually have the gap that's uncomfortable for me, um, which is great because it's the place I need to go. So I, I'm happy about it. Hmm. Yeah. And so independent on your own, like all these tools can be used by you. So whatever I did with you, you can use with people. So this kind of goes in your toolkit as a teacher or facilitator. If you go, yeah. hey, like if you want to bring teams together, ask questions and, and take them through a process. Uh, mm -hmm. That's one of the options of using this more from a business point of view where you can charge people, right? Yeah, I think, I mean, that's great. And I one of the things that I noticed for me um, that was, you know, as I was going through my own therapy process and all of that is that learning how to ask the right question like we're never taught how to ask questions like it's yeah. such a i mean we spend years in university and nobody teaches us how to ask questions i mean they're like oh come up with a hypothesis but you're not actually taught how to do that mm. so yeah so that maybe i don't know just um maybe you could have a preliminary thing around around question asking for people so that that's a good, good idea <clears throat> Um, because, because really the potency comes from the question, which I guess is the lens, right? Well, or the intention, I mean, it's, you're setting up the container to get your answer. And so that reference point is the question. And then the cards are formulating your conversational field, how you're programming the field, and then how you see what's in the field for the answer. So it's... Mm -hmm. It's pretty, as you know, I mean, it works very well. You were on one of the first teams to, to try out the harmonizer. How oh. long ago? Oh my God. It had to have been at least 20 years, if not more. Yeah, it's, it's getting there. Well, you saw just a little history for people. The first table I ever made was back in about 2001 in Vancouver. And Sada was one of the first people to sit at it or even see it. And so we've known each other I guess over 20 years. Yeah, amazing. It's a long time. Uh, oh. Why don't you give a, a little bit of background for people in terms of your Dukabor heritage and sort of maybe just say a little bit about like why, not that your perspective is so pertinent or, or unique, but just, you know, what's what's involved with it, you know? It's, it's... Yeah, um, so I come from a Dukabor background, um, specifically a Sons of Freedom Dukabor background, which were the activists in the community. Um, and there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of history and nuance to kind of the activism side. And usually when I say Dukabor, people imagine the nudity and burning houses kind of in the background in the media, um, which is, accurate to some extent it's just that it was sensationalized so I've been you know on my healing journey for a long time and I I have kind of my controversial perspective right now is that it was um, I had I came from a cult and that the the definition from a psychological perspective of a cult is when the identity of self is repressed and so what happens is 
the cult or community, and in some instances, it could be just a family identity, um, supersedes the identity of the individual and represses the individual's identity into the unconscious. And so then the process for healing is actually recognizing all these layers of identity that actually aren't the true and authentic self of the individual and freeing that. I think that process is relevant for everyone. Um, but there are certain things that are happening right now in society that we can see are um, specific kind of posturing or methods of dealing with um, the society at large that have that flavor of cult um, kind of, I don't want to say mind control because that's too strong, but um, you know, bringing in ideas that that don't support individuals and, and repress identity. So for example, this idea of, um, you know, when you see signs everywhere, there's, you know, the security guard is standing with a mask at the entrance to a store or wherever, right? And there's a sign usually beside them that says um, something like, stay together and then stand apart. And so that particular sign isn't logical. I mean, we all understand what it means, but what happens is when when something isn't logical and creates confusion, it bypasses our prefrontal cortex, which is the um, the place where we think about things and we distinguish whether they are um, a true or accurate or um, effective or important to all of those things. Um, so it bypasses all of that and goes directly into our unconscious to start programming programming us. Um, and so then you're going, well, what are the things that are being programmed? Well, there's a security guard standing. So this kind of security aspect. And then there's also, you know, somebody in a mask. And then there's the big sign that says, you know, six feet apart. So it's that, you know, the unconscious, you know, will frame that in simple language, like, you know, people are dangerous, you have to stay away from everybody. Um, and we actually don't know what the implications of this kind of thing is, and we won't know for probably a decade. Wow, as you're speaking, of course, it's it sort of something flashed to me, and that's why I put this map up in terms yeah. of the relationship between the personal space and the group space. And what you had said is the group space sort of takes away from the personal space, puts it down onto the unconscious. And so your own sense of autonomy or your own sense of self disappears. Is that, yes. that true? Yes. Because because this map to me, again, of all the maps yes, is the one that I think if we simplify the point of going, okay, well, that you just told me a formula. You just showed me something in terms of when the group space completely takes away the personal space that can be called, let's say a cult or. Uh, yeah. And or that oppressive, oppressive family or spouse member or any kind of oppressive regime. Right. And so to me, this map is kind of like ensuring that people recognize and sort of understand what their personal space is and how none of the other spaces can kind of come in there. And when they do, that's when we come into our sort of a pattern analysis of, of whether psychosis, I mean, any words that you use, right? Yeah. That are, that are formulating the negative side effects of whatever is occurring with these spaces. So, um, yeah. And often that happens under, under like duress, like, and stressful circumstances and, and things when, when our emotions are certain, certainly heightened, it doesn't matter whether it's good or bad. What happens is um, biologically our pupils dilate, right? And when our pupils dilate, we go from seeing panorama to focus. So for example, we might see a nice vista with you know a whole forest and then something happens, we get afraid or we see somebody that we're really attracted to and our pupils dilate and then that's the only thing that we see. Uh -huh. And so our minds actually follow that same pattern, like neurologically, the synapses fire only focusing. So any information outside of that then becomes superfluous and we can't actually access it. Wow. It, we, it automatically dismisses it. And that's, you know, when I was saying earlier about the lens, right? How do you get out of that lens? That's kind of why I was saying that because we have when, once we create a, an ideology or a belief system or anything like that 
we automatically just start dismissing. And so it's really, especially times like this, the practice really is to, you know, how many more ideas can I, you know, listen to? And does it get me going? Does it trigger me? And if it does, that's a place for me to do a little bit of personal work. Mm. Wow. I learned a lot this last hour. That's yeah, it. me too. <laughs> Well, I think, I think we're coming to the end. Okay. And uh, I just wondered if there was anything else you wanted to finish with in terms of uh, anything you want to say? Yeah, actually, I do want to say, I want to say thank you for um, holding space for me and allowing me to do this. And um, thank you for sharing your gifts. I know that it's been a long road with a lot of the wisdom that you've been bringing and trying to help people see. And everybody's always asking for you to make it simpler and, and easier. And I really love this idea of, you know, the divination tool um, that you've created online that makes it really easy. And it's just so beautiful to see it all coming to fruition. And um, yeah, so I just want to thank you for all of those years of work in the fires of like unacceptance or, or just challenge with like, you know, the naivety that most of us have to the capacity at which you were trying to share your wisdom. So I want to say thanks for all the hard work and thanks for not giving up. Well, thank you for acknowledging that and seeing, I mean, you, you were there pre cards. Uh, so you were there at first table. So you've seen, you've seen the, the, the transformation, if anything, yeah. um, and you definitely were a big help along the way. So I'm very uh, grateful for you and for this, this experience to share this together and to, yeah. And I think that's what it is. It's, it's about each of us helping each a little bit forward, each at a time, little conversations, small yeah. steps in the right direction. And then all of a sudden we're, we will show the world a whole new way of doing things. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so okay. thanks Thank for seeing you. you. Good luck okay, to everybody. Bye. Much love. Much love to you too, bye.